Okay. okay. Yeah. So the next speaker of today is Hanjun, who is going to uh, tell us about Lerna, secure single server aggregation via key homomorphic masking, doing work with uh, Huya Lin, Antigoni, and Stefars. Yeah, Th thanks for the introduction. Yeah, as he said, uh, it's a joint work with Rachel, Antigone, and Stefano. Uh, okay, so in our problem setting, uh, we consider M client and a single server where the clients only talk to the server, but not among themselves. Uh, the goal is for the server to securely compute the sum of the client's input mod the sum modulus p, uh, but without learning any uh, further information of individual inputs. So in our setting, we consider two types of machine failures. Uh, in the first type, uh, there are up to delta fraction of the clients that may drop out of may drop out of the uh, aggregation session. Uh, in the second type. A malicious adversary may corrupt up to gamma uh, fraction of the clients plus the server. And uh, our malicious correctness guarantee says that as long as delta and gamma are not too large, and if the server is the honest, then he can uh, correctly compute the aggregation result despite the dropping out and the corrupt, corrupted clients. If the server is also corrupted, then the privacy guarantee says that the server does not learn anything about each honest uh, client input beyond their sum. And the uh, secure aggregation, as we have seen today, has many uh, applications, including aggregating statistics of sensitive customer data, and it can be used uh, for secure federated the machine learning, where each client um, locally may have computed some model updates, which are sensitive, we want the server to only learn the aggregated update instead of individual ones. Uh, in our scenario, we further focus on uh, the case where a single server uh, runs multiple aggregation iterations uh, uh, with the same set of clients with a reusable setup. Since the setup cost is amortized over uh, many online iterations, we focus mainly on the online efficiency which include three aspects uh, around the complexity, uh, communication size, and computation time. Note that there are existing generic MPC solutions that consider similar uh, settings to ours. For example, uh, fluid, fluid MPC, uh, Lamans protocol, uh, this you only speak once MPC model, and the Phoenix protocol, they all consider the setting where uh, some of the participants may drop out during the protocol execution and the rejoin at a later point. There are also MPC protocols in this so-called one pass setting where the only allowed communication is between a single server and uh, every single client, but once, only once. Uh, our protocol is not a generic solution, it's tailored to secure aggregation in order to achieve better efficiency. Uh, okay, next I'll compare with uh, existing secure aggregation protocols in the single server setting that are also maliciously secure. First is the Google's protocol when uh, ported to, when considered in this scenario where we run multiple iterations, it has four online rounds per iteration. And uh, the main drawback of this protocol is that it has a M square uh, overhead in both communication and uh, computation. Next is the very recent work, MacroFed ML, which improves the above uh, to have only three online rounds. Uh, but the, one of its drawbacks is that the server needs to compute discrete logarithm to recover the result in the clear. So this restricts the protocol to be only applicable uh, for uh, when the input domains are really small. Uh, in comparison, our work, first of all, it avoids the uh, M square overhead. It also has three online rounds like MicroFed ML, uh, but our server computation is also very efficient. In particular, it does not compute a discrete logarithm, hence works for any large input domain. Uh, finally, the work of BBG20 applies a uh, optimization to the Google protocol in order to avoid the M square overhead. Uh, but as a result of this optimization, they achieve a weaker malicious privacy guarantee. Uh, the MacroFed ML also includes 
uh, another version which uses use a similar uh, optimization and it also inherits the weaker security patch. Now this concludes my comparison with uh, related works. Next, I will give you an overview of our protocol, which consists mainly of two uh, technical tools. The first is what we call a key homomorphic masking scheme. And the second is a linear secret sharing scheme that, uh, that's compatible with the masking scheme. But for the, the simplified uh, overview, we can just think Shamir's secret sharing. Uh, so the key homomorphic masking scheme has the following syntax where the mask algorithm takes a key and a tag and the message in ZP. It computes this C star, which we call the masked message. We require the decrypting algorithm to be very simple, which takes C star and the corresponding empty mask to recover the message X. And key homomorphism says that we can evaluate uh, any linear function over the mask so that it will translate to evaluating the same linear function over the keys and the messages. And uh, I will use this boxed notation to emphasize homomorphic evaluation. Uh, in our protocol, each client will, will reuse a secret masking key, but at every iteration, they will sample fresh tags to generate fresh masks. And the scheme, the security of the scheme is a standard semantic security. Okay, uh, with this masking scheme, I can now sketch our semi-honest protocol, which in the first uh, one-time setup phase, every client uh, samples a masking key, Ki, and secret shares them, and they, they distribute the shares through the server. Next, in every online iteration, T, uh, the client first computes uh, the masked message, C star sub I, using a common tag tile that's derived uh, using a random oracle H applied to the iteration number T. Uh, the client send this uh, mask message to the server and the server replies with the set of online parties U. Uh, next, each client will locally uh, compute the sum of the keys and use this sum to compute an empty mask C sub J uh, and send this to the server. The server now can homomorphically evaluate the secret sharing reconstruction algorithm uh, over the empty mask C sub J to compute C sub U, which by key homomorphism equals to an empty mask uh, over the key K sub U, which is the sum of the plain uh, masking keys. Next, the server homomorphically sums over the masked messages uh, and then applies the decryption algorithm to recover the, recover the result. Uh, okay, that's the uh, high level protocol. Uh, next, I'll give the first concrete instantiation under the LWR assumption. The assumption says that for, for a public random matrix A and the secret vector S in a large modulus ZQ, their product uh, rounded down to a much smaller modulus P is pseudo-random. So with this assumption, uh, our masking scheme is very simple. The mask algorithm computes a LWR sample and added to the message mod P. And decryption simply sub subtracts the pseudo-random LWR sample to recover the message. Um, however, the scheme only have approximate key homomorphism as shown on the slides because of the rounding difference, which is either zero or one. Uh, this causa causes a problem during uh, homomorphic evaluation, uh, which creates uh, this error term epsilon. In particular, when the server homomorphically evaluates the secret sharing reconstruction algorithm, uh, it creates an error term epsilon star that scales with, with the coefficient of recon. So if we use Shamir's secret sharing here, which has arbitrarily large coefficients, uh, then the, the error term epsilon star will be so large that it over, overwhelms uh, the message we want to recover. Therefore, what we, we really need is a linear secret sharing with small coefficients, which we call a flat secret sharing in our paper. Uh, okay, so that's the actual 
diagram under the LWR assumption. To obtain a flat secret sharing, we follow the, uh, the idea of DT06, which roughly says to translate a Boolean formula that computes the threshold function into a flat secret sharing scheme that computes the same function. I will omit the detail here, but what we uh, obtain is a scheme with a total share size order of lambda square. And our scheme has two thresholds, so gamma for privacy and rho for reconstruction, where rho and gamma are any two constant fractions. So you will notice that there is a constant fraction gap between those two thresholds. And finally, our uh, secret sharing has a probabilistic setup algorithm and it only achieves correctness and, uh, and privacy uh, statistically, but not perfectly. In, uh, specifically, for any subset share of the shares, uh, correctness and privacy may fail with some negligible probability over the randomness of, of the setup. Uh, finally, note that our total share size is uh, lambda square which is in independent of M. So when M is much larger than lambda square, there will exist a loss of clients that has shares at zero. And we call those uh, light clients. For the rest of the clients who have uh, non-zero share set, we call them heavy clients. And uh, in our experiment, we'll benchmark those separately. Uh, so this completes uh, the instantiation and the LWR. In our paper, we also have an instantiation under the DCR assumption. And for that, we need an integer linear secret sharing to work with it. And uh, a note is that the DCR instantiation achieves the same malicious privacy as the LWR one, but uh, it doesn't have malicious correctness, meaning that any uh, corrupted client may abort the aggregation session. Uh, okay. Finally, our experiment, in our experiment, we implement the semi-honest version of our protocol under ring LWR uh, in Python. And we compare it with also our implementation of the DVG20 protocol. Uh, our benchmarks are run under those parameter settings. In particular, the number of clients M uh, ranges from 400 to 3200. So the first two plots shows uh, the comparison of online computation time. Uh, as we can see, uh, our server computation is much faster than the BGG20 server. And uh, when M is large enough, the, we have some light clients that are showing uh, in green, which they are uh, much more efficient than the BGG20 clients. And for the heavy clients, uh, they achieve similar efficiency to the BGG client, uh, but when M is uh, much larger than 2200, as we can see on the plot, the orange line will eventually surpass the blue line, which is the BGG client. For communication, uh, again, our server communication size is much smaller than BGG20, and uh, both of our heavy and light clients uh, achieves significantly less communication than the DDD client. And uh, also note that uh, another important advantage of our protocol over the BGG one is that we have one less uh, number of rounds in the online phase. Uh, this concludes my talk. Uh, we, uh, the learner is a protocol for secure aggregation in the single server setting that achieves malicious security. And uh, it has very efficient online from complexity, communication, and uh, computation compared to existing works. And it can be instantiated uh, using the LWR or DCR assumption. OK, yeah, that's it. Thank, Thank you very much, Hanjin. Let's thank the speaker for the wonderful talk. So I would like to invite Antonius to go. First of all, thank the audience for staying. Uh, Sam and I would like to uh, ask Antonio to come. And in the meantime, while Antonio set up, uh, and you can take questions. Yeah. What? If anyone has any. Okay. 
Okay, so it seems there are no questions. Thank you again, Hanjun. And